Christ for Europe plan is launched during annual meetings of the church in the inter-European region. Church Council in South America emphasizes Bible studies, Sabbath school, and new generations. Adventist women in Mongolia receive first-time leadership certificate from Andrews University. Chinese couples serves as missionaries for Chinese in Brazil's most populous city. These stories and more, coming up. Europe is highly influenced by postmodernism, making it challenging for the everlasting gospel to grow there. Nevertheless, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the inter-European region shared hopeful plans for the continent during the last business meeting of 2022. The meeting was held in Plodiv, Bulgaria. Mario Brito, president of the Adventist Church in the region, highlighted, the challenges we are experiencing in secularized Europe are a preview of the same challenges in other regions of the world, more or less soon. The way we are facing them, and in many cases overcoming them, will open perspectives and paths for the church in other regions. This year's meeting featured a focused analysis and discussion on the growing opportunities of communication through digital media for the development of a personal discipleship ministry. Still on communication, Adventist World Radio representatives presented the plan for next year's project, Christ for Europe, taking place in May 2023, where several churches will participate in a joint effort for mission in Europe. More meeting details can be found at news.eud.adventist.org. Undoubtedly, education is key to freedom from ignorance and limitless opportunities. And when education is used to empower women to lead the Adventist church, the result is of eternal value. This is what happened in Mongolia, where 112 women received a certification from Andrews University, USA. Graduation was at the Central Church of Yulan Batar, capital of the country. They successfully completed the four levels of training courses in the General Conference Women's Ministries Leadership Certification course. This was the first team of our sisters in Mongolia who have received the certificate from Andrews University. Under the leadership of Uyu Batsuk, Mongolia Adventist Women's Ministries Director, the graduation program was a time for celebration. The commitment service at the end of the ceremony challenged the graduates to go and be the light wherever God calls them. Bible studies, Sabbath school, and small groups, and new generations these were some pillars of the annual council of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in South America. The meeting with the theme, You Vo, I Will Go, represents 2,600,000 believers from eight countries of the continent. The first week of November was marked by important decisions for the Adventist Church in eight South American countries. The annual council brought together leaders from various regions to discuss and vote on topics that will directly impact the work of the church in the coming year. One of the first items discussed at this meeting was the Secretariat's report, which brought data related to the Adventist's profile. Based on a survey of more than 102,000 South American members, the report reflected that about 50% of Adventists read the Bible daily, and just over 30% have in their daily routine a moment for worship with their family. And when it comes to social media platforms, almost 32% affirm that they use their profiles as an evangelistic tool. Information like this helps the various departments of the church to grow and develop more practical projects and action strategies. The Council's participants also heard the Treasurer's Report, where leaders highlighted how they have been using the church's resources from members' tithes and offerings. The data reveals that over the last few years, there has been a decrease in expenses to invest more in missionary and evangelistic initiatives. For the first time, the council heard from representatives of supporting ministries who talked about the results of their work. These ministries are born from the intentional actions of individuals or groups of Adventists, 
and end up being embraced by the organization as extra official projects. This is the case of the motorcycle ministry from Brazil, and they found the perfect way to reach a very particular public. There are some groups that are very segmented and have their own culture, and that's the case of bikers. There is hardly any other way to get in the middle of the motorcycle clubs, be part of their associations, and above all, share hope and salvation. If it wasn't for wearing a vest, having a motorcycle, going on trips, and having similar stories to share, we would have so much difficulty in reaching these groups. During the annual Council, some names were voted to occupy positions of leadership in different areas of the organization. An administrative region in Bolivia was also chosen, redefining a new region to help coordinate the work of the church in the south of the country. The meetings were also marked by the presentation of new projects and official Adventist church resources. The great controversy one of the main works representing the Adventist message has been announced as the missionary book for the next two years. It will be printed in more than 80 languages and distributed free of charge to the population in several countries. Here in South America alone, almost 32 million copies will be delivered. This is the largest evangelistic action of Adventists worldwide. Of the projects and resources presented during the Council, the majority are related to the Adventist Church's four emphases. These areas reflect some of the Church's most challenging points, but also present a great potential for mission, and therefore have received special focus and investment. The Church is focused focusing on Bible studies, small groups and Sabbath school, stewardship and new generations. The Youth Ministry Leaders Convention is linked to the last focus and will be held in June 2024. It has already generated great expectation in the public. New trainings and resources have also been developed for Sabbath school teachers. The new contents of this course aim to make the church and Sabbath school more inclusive and welcoming environments. A Escola Sabatina também é uma escola. Sabbath School is also a learning place for teachers. Working with children can be challenging for many reasons. Given the different situations they might face, we put together a course that speaks of specific needs, disorders, and deficiencies we know how to deal with today. And we are supporting these teachers so that they know how to work with a special needs child or with a teenager that is struggling and needs counseling. We want them to reach the youth and teach them Jesus' ways. And speaking of presenting Jesus, it wouldn't be fair not to mention baptisms that took place during the Council. All of them are the result of the work of Adventist members and are related to the four areas of focus in the Church. They were presented throughout the entire program reflecting the symbol of the trumpet, a symbol meticulously chosen to reference this meeting. The trumpet had a meaning very special in biblical times to announce, to prepare, to call, and invite. And we wanted this to be passed on to the public present here, as well so they could feel the importance of our mission. We have the responsibility to blow the trumpet loudly and announce a clear message of love and salvation, to announce the gospel and finish Jesus' work. We're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll meet a Chinese couple serving the Chinese in Brazil's most populous city. My brother's unexpected death shocked me into changing my life. A friend of mine said, why don't you do a triathlon? So I swam and rode and ran until I discovered life is more than just human strength. I race because my health matters. I believe because my faith matters. I'm Ed, I'm a Christian, I am an Iron Man, and I've discovered my whole life matters. You might be asking, who are Seventh-day Adventists? Commonly known as Adventists, we are a Christian movement established in 1863. We have 28 fundamental beliefs and more than 20 million members.
we also observe the seventh day Sabbath. Worldwide, we have more than 162,000 congregations. We serve countless communities with our education institutions. With two million students, and 198 hospitals around the world. And it's all because we love Jesus. Did God create dinosaurs? It's easy to look at these huge, terrifying creatures and wonder if a good God would have made them. They are also used as evidence for evolution, leading some to deny they existed. But the fossils clearly show they did. That doesn't mean God wanted deadly, man-eating monsters in his original creation. Our world changed, and now we have fearsome predators like sharks. Yet, the world still has many gentle creatures. Today, predators tell us something of God's power. But we know he never intended violence in his beautiful creation. Dinosaurs may inspire awe. But just as we look forward to the lion lying down with the lamb in God's new creation, we can hope that dinosaurs in their original gentle magnificence will also be there. It is common to hear stories of missionaries sent, for example, to countries in North Africa and Asia, regions with little presence of Christians. However, a Chinese couple chose to go against the trend and head in a different direction. They left their country to study in Brazil, where they met. Today they run a mission for Chinese people who live in Sao Paulo, one of the most populous cities in the world. Through a project designed by UNASPI, the Adventist University Center of Sao Paulo in southeastern Brazil, Lee received a full scholarship for his master's degree in biblical theology. Once he arrived, he learned he was not the only Chinese there. A few months earlier, the Chinese Union Mission had sent a young lady, Ying, to study communication in the same institute. It didn't take long for both to become good friends and finally get married. After marrying, Li and Ying continued their studies in Brazil, praying to understand God's will for them as a family. When they were about to graduate from their studies, the Adventist church in the central region of Sao Paulo invited them to be missionaries among the 250,000 of Chinese living in Sao Paulo. Now they understood their mission. God not only blessed them, making them a family, but he was also responding to their prayers by calling them to reach the Chinese in Brazil for Jesus, especially in Sao Paulo, a city with more than 12 million inhabitants. I Will Go projects are coming to life worldwide through the help of the Mission Impact Fund. This fund is an investment in global evangelism. Today we will learn about two more projects supported by the Mission Impact Fund, one in Colorado, United States, and another in Mosafingo, Zimbabwe. Let's take a look. The fourth project is called the Community Block Party. This project is a result of a demographic study initiated by the church to understand its community in a one mile radius surrounding the church. The results of the survey prompted the creation of the mission strategic plan to help guide the congregation in meeting the needs of the local community as a means of demonstrating Christ's methods. The block party will be carried out by the Denver Park Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church members in Denver, Colorado from the North American Division. The demographic survey revealed several urgent needs in the community, 
such as health and wellness care, crime and safety concerns, personal finances, racism and social justice, family disintegration, and spiritual guidance and teaching. It was determined that the first step should be meeting the neighbors, and so the idea for a block party titled Getting to Know You was born. The community block party will be focused on meeting community needs in the following areas. Health and wellness services like blood pressure and blood sugar monitoring, healthy cooking demonstrations, a farmer's market, education on growing your own food in the city, and dental and mental health resources. In addition, resources will be available dealing with employment, housing, and homelessness. This event will also offer church members the opportunity to prepare and then minister to new community friends. The goals of this project are to maintain missional stewardship to the surrounding community, help create a healthier community by meeting their indicated needs, and develop a database of community members to keep them appraised in ongoing church-sponsored activities. This will also foster continuing relationships with neighbors and friends that can potentially open doors to extend the gospel invitation. This project fulfills several of the church's strategic plan key performance indicators. However, one is key, and that is increased number of church members participating in both personal and public evangelistic outreach initiatives with the goal of total member involvement. What a great way to appeal to the neighborhood by holding a block party. This is a high impact, relatively low cost way to create presence in a community. The last project is titled Great Hope Daycare and Play Center and is the initiative of the Great Hope Adventist Church located in Masvingo, Zimbabwe of the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. The Great Hope Church is located in a rural area surrounded by five villages. In the past several years, the church has been able to forge a strong relationship with these communities. And since being established in 2013, the church has grown its membership from 32 to 123 members. In a recent demographic survey done in collaboration with the church and the government's village health department, it was discovered that only 15% of children between the ages of two to five in the five villages attend early childhood development programs. The nearest early childhood development facility is more than five kilometers away, making it nearly impossible for most families with small children to attend. In fact, there is currently no capacity to enroll more children in this facility. Children who do not attend early childhood development programs are severely disadvantaged when they enter primary school. There are many goals for this project. Priority goals are to prepare children in Christian faith principles to be Christ-like ambassadors to their families and communities, to offer an opportunity for the other 85% of village children to acquire social and learning skills necessary to excel in Adventist primary school to continue to foster the positive relationship between the Adventist denomination and the village families. This project fulfills several of the church's strategic plan key performance indicators. However, three are key. To disciple individuals and families into spirit-filled lives. To increase the number of children from Adventist homes and churches attending Adventist schools to increase the accession, reclamation, and participation of children, youth, and young adults. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We can't wait to see how the daycare and early childhood development program impacts these villages. Let's take a break, and then we'll see the work the, the Adventist Church is doing in a place overtaken by the presence of occult powers.
A study published in the Journal of the American Dietetic Association found that toddlers aged 12 months and older consumed a third of their daily calories from snacking between meals, with the snacks becoming less nutritious as the children got older. Dietary patterns low in fruits and veggies and high in sweets and saturated fats began to develop between the ages of 12 months and 24 months, and this pattern tended to be established by 24 months. That's a fact. But there's hope. Parents can establish the foundation for a healthy diet early in life when eating habits and preferences are being formed. Simple dietary changes, such as offering more nutritious snacks, can help prevent obesity and chronic disease in our children. So switch the gummy bear for blueberries and see them growing healthier and happier. Have you ever wondered if there was more to life? Do you have big questions with hard to find answers? The Discover Bible Guides are Hope Channel's free gift to you. These 26 beautifully illustrated guides cover major themes of the Bible and answer some of life's deepest questions. Visit HopeBibleStudy.org or call 888-446-7388 and begin your journey to discovery today. Helping out in my community and taking care of God's creations is what makes my life more vivid. There is no place God cannot reach. Amidst the world's voodoo epicenter, in a place that has been overtaken by occult powers, the church continues to grow as Christ's light attracts thousands. We have celebrated 50 years of the foundation of the first black conference in Africa. Thousands of people gathered in Kumasi, Ghana for the event. We record God's faithfulness towards us. From a humble beginning, we have established health, and education institutions and open new conferences. The President of the Republic of Ghana attended the celebration of the centenary of Ashanti New Town Church in Kumasi in October 2021. Togo and the Benin Mission are now conferences. This shows that our church is growing amidst the world's voodoo epicenter. In a place surrounded by the atmosphere of occult powers, more and more people have been attracted to the light of Christ. We are planning for the future. That's why we have bought properties in Côte d'Ivoire, where we plan to build new offices and the future administrative headquarters for the division. An office annex was established in Abuja, Nigeria. We have also purchased properties in Senegal, remodeled the guest house in Abidjan, and built a 50-room guest house in Monrovia, Liberia, considering the welfare of our local churches and employees. The Heritage Fund has been established this fund is of great help to the mission of the church and to many of our employees in some of our unions and most especially in Ghana. There is no age limit to becoming involved in the Gospel Commission. Adults and children alike can share Jesus wherever they may be, at a business office, grocery store, or even at the playground. Camp was such fun for Dorcas. The leaders told Bible stories and taught the children new songs to sing and fun crafts to do. And every day, the children received a card with a Bible verse on it to learn. As Dorcas held her card one day, she had an idea. When she returned home from camp, she asked her father to make copies of all the Bible verse cards to share with her friends at school. Then she invited two of her best friends to meet her during recess. I've brought you something, Dorcas said. They're Bible verses. Let's meet during recess to practice and learn them together. 
The girls accepted the cards and agreed to learn the Bible verses. When they met Dorcas the next morning, the girls had a surprise for her. Instead of just two girls, 10 children had come to meet Dorcas during recess. They all wanted cards and they all agreed to memorize the Bible verses. Dorcas was amazed that so many children wanted to learn God's word. She needed more cards. Dorcas gave each child a card and invited them to come back the next day to practice the Bible verses. Every day, more children came to Dorcas during morning recess to say their Bible verse and get another card. Within two weeks, 20 children were learning Bible verses. It was a big group. When Dorcas talked about how many children were coming, her mom suggested that the children meet at their house. Dorcas invited her friends over on Wednesday and Friday evenings. All 20 friends came and they invited more friends. They sang songs, listened to a Bible story, and did the same crafts Dorcas had learned at summer camp. And the group kept growing. Soon, too many children were coming to meet inside the house, so they began meeting outside. Six months after Dorcas started the Bible group, about 50 children and even some of their parents were coming to the Wednesday and Friday meetings, and almost a hundred of them were attending on Sabbath morning for worship. Dorcas planned a regular Sabbath school program for the children, and her mom and dad helped lead the worship one day, she found out that several people had given their hearts to Jesus and wanted to be baptized. What good news that was! Because Dorcas let God lead her, a whole new church was planted in her village in Papua New Guinea. We can do big things for God if we follow the ideas that Jesus gives us. Please pray for children like Dorcas who are helping to lead others to Jesus. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember, Leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 and 16. It says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and keep His commandments, His statutes and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope, God bless.